but now we're at like a uh, policing and the public policy. Uh, President Biden recognized the sacrifice police officers and their families make to like, keep our community safe. They don't. Um, uh, because like, police are here to like, serve and protect uh, capital under capitalism and enforce trespass laws, which is why in order for capitalism to exist, you need half the state. I'm sorry, right wing libertarians and anarcho capitalists, but uh, you need state in order to have capitalism. Um, continue on. Every day, officers risk a rise for the safety of the people that do not know. Okay. So, yeah, it is risky for, like, people to be peace officers, but not as risky as to say to be a pizza delivery driver. There are more deaths to pizza delivery drivers than there are cops each and every year. Cops do not even make the top ten of the most dangerous, like, occupation in the USA. Uh, because, uh, crab, crab fishermen, or other fishermen, uh, coal miners, and, uh, like, electricians, um, electrical engineers, um... They often have like more deaths as well. The construction workers, again, pizza delivery drivers, because they drive around a lot and they increase their chances of getting like car accidents, which does kill people. So yeah. And since uh, so continue, and since day one, President Biden has been working to make sure police officers have the tools they need to, uh, to protect their communities, including more police officers on the street. Uh, we need to like fund the police and and uh, not defund the police. <sighs> yes, this is true. This is absolutely fucking true. So, we kind of, any leftist that was paying attention kind of already know this since the Ferguson uprising after the death of, like, uh, Michael Brown at the hands of Derek, Sh uh, Derek Wilson. It was always a Derek. Um, that, like, liberal reforms of the police doesn't do anything to reduce police violence. It's just, like adds extra steps that police have to do in order to enact their violence if they choose to. Um, or they want to. Or just caught up in the moment as we're too. Or thought he had a gun. Turned out to just be his cell phone. Turned, so yeah, a police officer makes mistaken this for a gun. This excuse that like one police officer gave. Hey, all the police officer has to say to like justify any shooting that they do is I fear for my life. And many often times, when like uh, I went to testimony, say that the police officers are not did not administer aid to like the people that they shot as well too at all, because if they did administer aid, the person would live, and then they can give their testimony of what happened. But if the person dies, all the testimony we have is a police officer that was involved in the shooting. Notice that it's a passive voice when talking about the police officer, and never the active voice police officer involved shooting is never the actual cop being shot themselves it's about them doing the shooting um and, and yet like after 2020 the george Floyd uprising as well too one of the largest like radical uh racial like um protests in history so it is up there with like the like civil rights movements of the 60s the 2020 like a uh, summer 2020 in the george Floyd uprising because that was worldwide. It sparked several like demonstrations worldwide. The Democrats then later said, we're not going to defund the police. So that movement died at the ballot box. Um, I think eight to abolish is the command I have. I did find it again. I'm going to try to find it again. Um... Oh, BLM, yeah. Uh, I think BLM, yeah. Yeah, BLM, my command for BLM has a link to, like, 8 to abolish, which is 8 steps to, like, uh, abolish to police as well, too. Because I am a police and prison abolitionist. That's just how I am. That's how I feel. And, like, the first step is to defund the police. And that was... that. This is why I... T this is my issue with representative democracy. Because it's not a democracy of the people, it's a democracy of the representatives. Because it's the representatives, the legislators, they are the ones that make the rules. They are the ones that make the laws. They're the ones that like practice democracy. We just like sort of practice democracy each uh, every four years, every two years, uh, every year. There's always elections every year. Uh, but significant elections every two years or so for like Senate and the House, and then every four years for President, as well as Senate and the House. And governorships and that sort of thing too, and then statewide elections and local elections and all that sort of thing. Um, 
the people the people could want one thing but if the representatives that they vote for say no we're doing this then that's it like think and again liberals who are telling me who are telling us left this all throughout 2020 we're going to hold biden's feet there fine we're going to hold biden's feet to we're going to pull biden left here we go they're not going to defund the police that's what the base of the democratic party wanted not necessarily everyone. Some of the white liberals did not want to defund the police. But a lot of people, a lot of non-white people, a lot of like poor people, a lot of the Democratic base wanted the police to be funded. Not just after like 2020, but after Ferguson. They wanted to defund the police. And the Democratic Party says, no, we're not defunding the police. We're going to fund the police. Here, right here in this statement. So I'm sorry, liberals, you can believe that you can change the politicians that you elect. But there comes, a, when push comes to shove, the politicians themselves are not going to change. I don't believe we can pull Biden left. And I know that liberals, and so what pisses me off about like liberals when they, they say, we're going to pull Biden left after he gets elected. I knew we were only going to get $1,400. I'm still salty about that. I'm not, that's a clear example that like they weren't that. They they just said we're going to pull Biden left just to force us to like vote for Biden. Because it is a hostage situation that's like we have to vote for the lesser two answer. It is hostage. Voting for the president is not like actual democracy or like voting. It's a hostage situation. Because then, because then if we do actually exercise uh, our right to vote and vote for third party, we're erasing our votes. Then it's our vote to race. It's our vote to race. Stop judging us for like how we vote. We so we can't do a protest vote of like show of what discontent we have for like such and such present. And yet liberals were preparing to like tell us to like vote for the pro genocide of like uh, President Biden. Well, we have to vote for the pro genocide of like Kamala Harris. Because no matter what, like Kamala Harris is going to like uh, be pro-Israel. She will say she'll just like both sides the issue and talk in like a, in both directions about like the Palestinian genocide, and she will just express sadness of like the, what's happening to Palestine and as well too. But she's not going to do anything to like. She is just not going to do anything about the Palestinian genocide because she's going to because she still say that Israel has the right to defend themselves. Anyway, continue on. Um, Democrats passed and the President Biden signed the American Rescue Plan um, with the largest ever federal investment in fighting and preventing crime, reducing violence, and like investing in public safety. And like I said before, the, like Biden increased the budget of the cops way more than Trump did. But they, but they made Juneteenth a national holiday. Uh, so that's why, believe it or not, yes, the Democrats can also be racist too because they're pro the police in this way. Uh, continue on. Uh, that funding enabled like the cities is will Paul Biden left? Oh, will that like stop him from like uh, rolling over and letting the conservatives like uh, fucked over the trans community? He will actually like lift a finger to like maybe help the trans community. Yeah. At least Steve Shives did recognize that that was like bullshit that like Biden did. Um, at least Steve Shives was like his heart sank when he saw that like um, Biden capitulated to like conservatives uh, to uh, compromise on things and basically didn't it federally kind of allowed like uh, schools to like ban like uh, trans like athletes from like uh, playing in the sport of uh, the gender that they want to uh, uh, that they want to play in is that forces like play based on the gender that they're assigned to birth. And, and, uh, and like uh, it can happen here, like me along and others have like covered like the, the insufficiencies and the terrible transphobic like rhetoric in the policies, actual policies of like uh, Biden as well too. And it's so like like liberals like Seashies or progressives like Seashies were disheartened to see Biden do that. Here's the thing, though: I'm not surprised Biden did that. I read like the Biden's yesterday's man um, book. Uh, he's by Jacobin, like writer that like chronicled like a lot of things and like Biden has done. It came out in twenty twenty during the election. 
and I read that like uh, book and thought it was pretty good and it seemed to be where resource and want like uh, check on the references. But basically, Biden throughout his entire political campaign, political career, always kind of like compromised with the Republican Party. As often, Biden is like more right than like other like uh, Democrats. Just like how like FDR went to more conservative like uh, running mate and like Harry Truman. That's what Barack Obama did with like Biden. He like... And I'm was surprised Biden did, if only hey, because I just never, never kept up with like American politics so much. I, I never like had hope that like Biden was going to like, be pulled left. Again, like I mentioned last time, that, uh, is, and it pissed me off when I read that that like the the Democrats would say, oh, we're going to do everything possible to reduce student debt. No, you didn't. You guys like when someone asked President Biden if that if would he reduce forgive $50,000 in student debt, up to $50,000 in student debt, something that like he has the power to do. He said, I will not. He didn't say, I cannot. He didn't say, I can't do that. He didn't say, I do not have that power. He simply said, I will not. He did not refute that he had the power to do so. He didn't say, no, that's not actually true. He just said, I will not. So fucking much for like, trying to pull Biden left. And and yes, after that happened, after he gave like $10,000 or up to $20,000 for like certain student loans, all the liberals have said we should be grateful for this. You The liberals, you are always saying that we should be grateful for what the Democrats are fucking doing because you're saying we should be grateful for fucking crumbs. Is that what pissed me off about the liberals? It doesn't matter what, like, I didn't even know he was asked that question in the first place. It was on video. It was on video. He was at a conference, uh, or like, a, uh, that he did. And he was asked that by one of the questioners. Or, or, so, that's how I have evidence of that. I seen the video. So, what pisses me off about liberals... Despite all of their policies or what they wish to see implemented as well, too. They will just accept the crumbs that the Democrats give them. And then, like for around lunchtime, they'll browbeat us to try to vote for the lesser two evils. And we'll blame third party voters or any, or anyone else that didn't vote for the president as for the reason that like the other side won. Sometimes, sometimes these shies will like make a video. It's like, what's wrong with the Democrats? Because it's like, what's wrong with Democrats? I wish them to be better. But that's the thing. I do not have hope that Democrats will be better. I just don't. That I do not see the Democrats, the Democrat Party in the eyes that like the liberals do. And that is the, that sometimes, it sometimes it gets like in, into like fights as well too. Steve Shives, it has yelled at me. He did apologize afterwards for the yelling at me. Hey, because I think Steve Shives and other liberals are emotionally invested in the Democratic Party's doing well, much like how uh, they, even, they, even though they probably won't admit that, but that I think it's like kind of true. They kind of still treat politics as team sports, that they want their team wins, and the Democrats are their team. They're, putting, they're betting money on the horse of the Democrats. So they're emotionally invested in the Democrats doing well. So when I bring up my criticism of Democrats, sometimes they'll, sometimes they'll admit that, like, yeah, the Democrats could be a lot better, or the, they're, it's not going to be much better in immigration or foreign policy, like, they're pretty much, like, almost the same, like, the Republicans in that way, but they're more presidential. But when, uh, it, but since, like, liberals are, some liberals are, are patriotic about the USA, and, like, are, they're proud of being Democrats, they get defensive. They get defensive when I express my criticisms of the Democrats. I have seen it from C shots when I if I push hard into like if I push hard into things that like he and I disagrees on. <sighs> so yeah, the. The Democrats said that they're not going to like fund the police, and it's like so much for trying to pull Biden to the left. And Harris is not going to be pulled much to the left either. 
if Harris if Harris was like the fourth most progressive like uh, Democrat in like the Senate as well too, that's more of like dipe into the Senate than than anything that I praise about like Kamala Harris of. Let's let's continue on. Um, that funding enables cities and states to invest more than like 15 billions in public safety and fire prevention, and putting more police officers on the beat for for accountability community policing. Yeah, fucking right. Uh, continue on, as well as like in interrupting and preventing crime. Police don't prevent crime. Uh, we have seen it many time, nine times before. In fact, in the history of police officers, are in, by written by Christian Williams in like uh, his book, um, "There Are Enemies in Blue." I think I also read the uh, uh, read an essay of his on like uh, stream on this topic as well too. The crime did not they decrease when police were introduced in the eighteen hundreds. So police are not the deterrent of crime. The police exist right now, and we still have crime. So there's much more underlying issues that like capital like happen in order to prevent crime. I say uh, get rid of capitalism, and that will prevent a lot of crime. Get rid of poverty, that will definitely get rid of a lot of crime. Continue on. In twenty in two thousand and twenty in twenty twenty three, the Justice Department provided five point eight billion in into state, local, tribal, and like territorial law enforcement agencies, research institutions, and nonprofits to advance public safety, including funding for 1,730 uh, new police officers in nearly 400 communities. Um, because police officers should be able to focus on fighting crime, President Biden secured the first ever federal funding slowly dedicated to community violence and in, in, in uh, in innovation and protection. Uh, in, in, in intervention, intervention. I, I had difficulty like figuring out the word. Um, uh, we read this like, section. Uh, President Biden secured the first ever federal funding solely dedicated to community violent intervention programs, and he increased funding for crisis interventions, mobile crisis teams, and training for first responders and law enforcement. Um, and seeing them cause crime on violence and shit, prevent crime. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. They cause crime, honestly. And like how protests aren't just protests. They only turn into riots because of cops. Historically and like in recent history. Time and time and time again, the police agitated like the protests have become riots. They wouldn't have been riots if the police were there. Um... Continue on. Uh, President Biden also signed legislation uh, replenishing the Crime and Victims Fund, uh, which supports the programs that like assist survivors. Democrats also secure funding for like extra security uh, places of worship and communities institutions, and we are invest investing in tribal uh, public uh, safety. I, it, it is it, it'll, it'll be more the peaceful, nonviolent process. Ever. Yeah. And yeah, it'll yeah, it'll be the most peaceful nonviolent protest ever. Then the cops will show up and make it a riot. And the police will go, all right, get the your riot kill, tear gas and shit as well too. Because when because those protesters were protesting against the state, were protesting against the legitimacy of the state. Look at the college encampment like protests uh, in solidarity with Palestine and it happened over the summer. And some of those have still continued on now the school is like back in session and since the fall. But yeah, when we ever re criticize the state, this will too. The come, police come out and enforce the state's will onto us. Uh, so we should not go against the grain against the state, and we should not. Uh, we should fall in line with the state in order to like see the things. Because if they don't, then yeah, the police are going to tear gas us. Uh, continue on. Public trust, as any police officer will tell you, it's a foundation of public safety, and the public doesn't trust you. I don't do anything about large. I mean. At least like forty percent or something like that. I don't know the stats on that, but like, especially a lot of like marginalized people are not gonna trust police. Again, Stonewall that started by the police. The police were harassing the patrons of the Stonewall Inn, and that's how the first ever pride. The first ever pride was a motherfucking riot against the police. Continue on. That's why that's why people say no cops at pride. Or if there are cops that happen to be gay, they are welcome to that pride, but out of the uniform. Continue on. Uh, police cannot like fulfill their role to keep communities safe without public trust and confidence in law enforcement and in the criminal justice system. Yet there are places in America today where like the bonds of trust are frayed or broken. Um, President, I mean, there's a whole reason that in Minnesota or Minneapolis, the 
uh, the people ignited a huge, huge uh, can of like Minnesota knives and blow up the police station. And Tim Wallace looked up there like um, it's called the National Guard. I don't blame Tim Wallace too much on doing that because he was just fulfilling his role as a governor. On. Uh, President uh, Biden took action to en en enhance like a uh, public trust by like signing a historical executive order on police reform alongside George Floyd's family. <laughs> yeah, and then B even Biden said, Biden said, it's better if like the, the police, it, it's better if police just like shoot the person in the leg than shoot the person in the heart. So Biden is just like accepting that police officers are just gonna shoot people. I remember the one when he did that. It's like, no. And he was on 2020 campaign. And he was like, he did not campaign at all on defund the police. And in internal, and yeah, so like the Democrats lost the House that year as well. Or didn't do as well. Or the barely held on to the House as well too. Oh, and like internally in the Democratic Party, they said the reason why they lost some swing seats as well too, or barely hold on to the House and that sort of thing too, is all because of the defund the police as well too. And so the, the defund police lost us votes as well too. And it's like, no, I don't th I think he should have just gone harder. But like the Democrats are more afraid of like tax from the, the far right. Or to film the fascists. Remember, uh, the Democrats are a right wing party and a center to center right party. A center right to right wing party. Well, the fascists, the Thugland party, are just like the, 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 the fascist party. They're farther right. We don't have a left wing party. I, thought green, I don't know. The Greens are not that viable in the USA. Uh, we don't have a left-wing political party. Now, not like a substantial one, not like a viable one, at least for like nationally. Uh, sometimes, like the social, uh, social alternative and other parties like that, will get like a city and some member, maybe some mayors, but like that's about it. We don't have a left-wing political party. The Democrats are just like a center-right and right-wing party. Uh, continue on. And he launched a national law enforcement accountability database with information on misconduct by federal law enforcement uh, officers and sharply restricted like chokeholds on and no knock warrants for federal law officers. Uh, now, I don't want like a um, criticize Biden too much on this sort of thing, too, because he only has like he only has power over federal law enforcement. Uh, other law enforcement are like local law enforcement. That's for the local governments to do. Uh, he can wish for them to do something about sort of things, but he cannot act except the policies or like except the uh, actions uh, for local uh, or state uh, uh, state police uh, police organizations as well too, because the states have their own like let's say highway patrols and that sort of thing too. They have their own state like uh, officers as well too, and then like each city has their own like police forces as well. So yeah, continue on. Um, an administration is uh, publishing data on the use of force and is also preventing certain militarized uh, equipment being sold or transferred to like local presidencies. Yeah, I've read an essay on that like four years ago uh, about the mil sales of military uh, weaponry to like um, police um, and to uh, police stations. A lot of it stems from the military industrial complex. We make so much like military equipment and for like our military. We discussed this before on like our previous stream. And we spend like way more on like the military, not in terms, not only in terms of dollars, but also in terms of like percentage of like the national budget that, uh, that not even our closest allies, our closest enemies come close. And so that kind of like military equipment does actually kind of trickle down and tr trickles down to local law enforcement. They get those access to those military equipments, which is why you see like um, some uh, police uh, departments roll around in tanks when like protests were happening or at least armored vehicles that are transporting other cops. Um uh, they, the the police they do also also have like bomb sniffing dogs as well too, and when the because the police uh it serve to protect capital and like enforce their trespassing laws. So when like a family in uh Oklahoma, uh Oakland, uh, not Oklahoma, Oklahoma State in the middle of the uh the country and in Tornado Island, Oakland, a city west no east of San Francisco, um. There was like a couple of families of black families 
that they not even had guns or are not in danger of anyone. And they just wanted like a, they were homeless and wanted to live in a house uh, to like raise their kids in. And because they're homeless, they squatted a empty house, a empty house, empty. No one's using it. No one was living there. Empty. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, they were squatting it. And yes, that is illegal because I uh, guess that house is owned, but it's owned by property managers or property investment firm or real estate investment firm that were not using it, intentionally not used it. They bought it in like 2008 after the crash and they were playing, just like sitting on it like an asset, like a stock or like that sort of thing and hoping to like sell it off big once the market goes up or it's like been renovated or something like that. So buy low, sell high with houses just like in stock markets. And... So the, the black women and families were like squatting that. The cops sent in a police sniff, a bomb sticking dog. That you you should see. It was like they were trying to like go Benghazi at a place with the cops and the military equipment that they have. It's all because like a couple of black families, a single mothers with children that were homeless, were just living in a house that they did not own. I haven't followed up on that story that happened years ago, so I think they were trying to like get that house and probably have like worked in to get that house. And I hope that like laws are changed and so that like imprints from like home, homes are going empty as well too. But the Democrats are full of a bunch of like landlords themselves as well too, so I doubt that's going to happen. Again, there's the base of the party can believe in one thing: I, the base of the Democratic Party are much more progressive, much more to the left than the party itself. And I also judge the party based on its actions, not on the what the fucking things they fucking say i base the democratic parties and what they're doing based on their actions and based on their actions they're a center right right wing party so that's why i i just do not have any the democratic parties and leading us to like the promised land and that's why I, I that's why i'm a anarchist that's why i don't think democratic socialism is the way to go too because I do not believe that by just voting, can we can vote away capitalism, we can vote away the state, and we can vote it in socialism. And you can probably, you can vote in some socialists into like political offices. But even then, it's only going to be a small handful, if any. And then they're going to just be the laughingstock of the whole Senate or the whole Congress or the whole House or the whole Parliament. And they're just going to like wait for like that like uh, one socialist to finally just like caucus with like the rest of the like closest like left wing party that they can like the Democrats in this case or like Labour in the UK or like other parties in like uh, Canada and other places and you know maybe they would just like do the their stumping speech and do that one protest vote as well too but like they're not going to get much stuff done. So that's why, like, voting in socialists into the political office, unless you're able to vote in socialists in every political office. But even then, I don't even, I don't even think that, like, Marxist Leninists and Marxist Leninist Malice agree that, like, uh, that voting in socialists is enough as well, too. And I'm not sure how many Marxist Leninists or Marxist Leninist Malice will get into offices either. And most of the Democratic Socialists, especially the politicians that say that they're Democratic Socialists, they're really Social Democrats. And that's a little different of a thing. And Social Democrats are basically centrist. Uh, continuing. Uh, where was I? Um, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I finished this section. Okay, this paragraph. Now I can continue on. Uh, Trump oversaw the, uh, the largest one-year increase in murders ever recorded. I mean, that could have like been like uh, just because like we're coming out of the pandemic and like other factors as well too. But I'll agree that like Trump didn't help things. I will say that. Uh, including what's going to come up next. Anyway, continue on. On January 6th, he encouraged the uh, rioters who attacked the police officers to protect our capital. Since then, he promised to pardon these like convicted criminals. Uh, he is the candidate who wants to defund the police. <laughs> yet it's like they yet the thugging parties are complaining about like all the leftists want to defund the police as well too they want chaos and mayhem as well too so like and that's not what anarchy is anarchy is not chaos and mayhem anarchy, anarchy just means no rulers doesn't mean, anarchy does not mean no rules it just means no rulers continue on as president, he repeatedly proposed uh, cutting the funding to like state and local like uh, law enforcement programs including cops that fund and um, that funds uh, local police officers for three years in a row. Um, cops the show? No, I'm joking. Um, and yeah, honestly, I think Trump did that for petty reasons, honestly. It'd be it's so weird that, like, he, like, the... 
uh, law and order kind of guy and the fascist one that a lot of people like one th i say the one third of the like voting population which is one sixth of the usa population they just want fascism some of them will just couch it as like they want law and order which is why they want fascists or traditional values that sort of, but some of them just may may outright say no i just want fascism i think fascism is a good idea but they want the strong man and want a dictatorship and that sort of thing too, uh, to in order to like police and like uh, the people that they don't like. I, uh, but it's so interesting that they want fascism. It's like yet the Donald Trump is the funny thing. No, but no, that also makes sense. It because that will bring about fascism. Well, the by defunding institutions that are meant to protect people in some ways. Uh, I'm pretty sure Trump does like most of the things he does for stupid and petty ass reasons. Yeah, I agree, Lucidia. Like, he did actually want to fund the Department of Justice and the FBI just because, like, uh, they did not do what he wanted them to do. That's pretty much it, honestly. Continue on. Uh, he has called uh, to defund the Department of Justice and the FBI, and he says he will lift hold federal, like, funding for local police departments that don't uh, adopt policies like uh, stop and frisk or, like, assist in mass deportation. Biden's going to, like, do, uh, Harris is going to do mass deportation as well, too, honestly. Uh, immigration policy is not going to change with like uh, whether or not uh, Donald Trump or like Kamala Harris are in office as well too. Um, they think that it would change an uh, immigration if Donald Trump is in office as opposed to Paul Harris. So the liberal media will start reporting on the horribleness that is happening at the border. Or, of like immigration and liberals will actually start funding or like giving money to like orgs that are trying to like help people at the border because like they were doing that when trump was in office but once biden got the office that funding dried up the liberals stopped giving a shit about immigrants because most liberals do not give a shit about immigrants most liberals uh do not live near the border or know someone who is immigrated to this country so it's n that's why the Democrats are not going to do anything about immigration because it's not a issue that wins them elections because the majority of the people in the USA don't care. They live far from borders, don't know anyone that immigrated here, don't get to know uh, the people as people, uh, not immigrants, because uh, no one's illegal as well, too. And that's how you get, like, also, like, strong immigration policy from the Democrats as well as the Thumpkins. The Thumpkins are just, like, not kind about it. Well, like, the Democrats will be more presidential. And also, that's going to be reported by the liberal media as much. Because uh, the cages are still happening, and people are, and family separation still happens. It's just not on our news. And it was not, like, uh, right in front of us and the egregious as it was under Trump. But still, it was, yeah. Continue on. Trump has been like equally disastrous uh, for accountability, uh, accountable policing. As president, he reversed the restrictions that limited the transport of surplus like military equipment to local police departments and effectively abandoned um, pattern or practice uh, investigations in police misconduct. Um, that was going to happen anyway because there's always the blue wall of silence when the uh, police officers will like circle the rags around one their own uh, whenever that sort of thing happens. Continue, but continue on. When protests like follow George Floyd's murder, he tweeted, when the looting in the starts, the shooting starts. As in reference to the protesters as thugs and tear casts like uh, non-violent protesters outside of the White House. Yet, when... But... How the Democrats will react to like protesting as well too? They will say violence is not necessary. Still demonizing the protesters as being looters or like violent thugs. They probably won't say the word thugs again. They'll be more presidential, but they will still like to condemn the violence. And yes, uh, the police brutality is horrible, or something like that. But violence isn't necessary. They will still ask for non-violence because non-violence protects the state. As seemed to unfortunately be an asshole and Peter Gatelos, he wrote a book uh, called Nonviolence Protect How Nonviolence Protects States. But continue on. Uh, if he gets another term, he will resume stop and frick policies. Uh, stop and frick policies that happen under like Democrats they led cities anyway. So like I don't think the Democrats are gonna stop stop and frick policies. He's, I'm sure Trump will resume them, but I bet that also will happen and as well on Democratic mayors. There are some Democratic mayors that are just after Republicans, but change Democrat and really do not change any policies as well, too. And then just a lot of Democratic mayors are just pieces of shit. Uh, uh, the Democratic mayor in Chicago, in New York. Eric Adams was, it's a fucking cop. 
In fact, the, the fact he's a black man, he's a, he was a fucking cop, and that's why the policing in, like, New York City is as terrible as it is. Um, not just, like, when uh, Rudy Giuliani was mayor, and hey, he, like, enforced his talk and frisk, like, policies uh, in New York. Um, I'll reread this part as well, too. Mayors are, they are basically just, like, playing the field then. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if he gets so, if he gets enough funds, he will soon stop for first policies and withhold federal funding for local police departments that do not adopt this uh, discriminatory policy. There's a lot of police uh, uh, organizations that will like love to do the stop and frisk because like they can like basically assert their power onto like anyone that they deem to be like criminal or suspicious or they suspect of doing a crime. That's the whole point of stop and frisk. It's on and. The Baltimore Police Department would do this regularly, and this was also depicted in the show The Wire. Uh, they do go to basically the ghetto or like poor neighborhoods, which are often like predominantly black neighborhoods as well too, because how race and class are like intertwined here in like in USA, and because the USA is like we this is not the United States of America. This is the Imperial Corporation's white supremacy. Um. They, the, the Baltimore Police Department used to regularly humble the people in the ghettos. They basically just harassed them and maybe like arrest them for jaywalking, basically walking while black. Um, and so like I know uh, they, I don't trust the Democrats. I'm not going to do that honestly. Or you, uh, I don't, I don't trust that like Kamala is actually going to do something about like a uh, Democratic mayors or other mayors in other cities, like uh, just like introduce a like a fr stop and frisk policy as well too. Oh, because police departments are going to do that too. Again, they just love to have the. There's a lot of people who get become police because they get the power to be able to harass people by being a police officer. Anyway. Continue on. He promised to sign legislation to broaden the qualified immunity for legal accountability for police conduct. I doubt that's going to happen on Democrats anyway. Continue on. President Biden is committed to making our country safer for like every American citizens and law enforcement alike. Democrats will pass I think like the it's going to be in the hierarchy of the, the law enforcement and then the citizens and then the non citizens. Honestly, because we're going to deport a lot of people who are non citizens. Uh, continue on. Democrats will pass the, the, his like a safer American plan, in which calls on the Congress to invest in thirty-seven billion in, to support law enforcement and crime protection. Didn't they already invested fifteen billion into like local agencies and other government organizations and other police agencies? So he's asking for more money, even when the, in this document they said the crime has been at the lowest it's been in years, and they still want more funding. They still want to fund the police more. Why? So, Steve Shines, yes, I am reading Kamala Harris's policies. I'm not liking it. That's I'm an anarchist. I have tax standards. Continue on. Uh, that includes uh, funding uh, 100,000 additional police officers for accountability, community uh, policing, and $5 billion in community violence intervention, which will help prevent like uh, crime. Uh, you're not sure about that, honestly. Uh, keep uh, communities like safe and build trust between law enforcement and communities they serve. Uh, then that, That's... That's going to be really hard to like do for law enforcement. You can build trust in the community by getting rid of the law enforcement, and but then have like um, medical workers or medical uh, service experts or medical health experts and crisis like um, negotiators or the people that deal with crisis and like social workers, there's as well as like doctors and like um, hospitals and other places, uh, mental health facilities uh, that do it out of care and not to try to like um, keep people you know, locked away. You can do, have like rapid responsibilities or like um, crisis managers that can will handle the best of the uh, to services as well too, not cops. Cops are not going to protect the community as well, too. So it's kind of hard for the communities to get trust for law enforcement. Uh, continue on. We will continue a new violent crime reduction and prevention fund to give federal, state, and local, and tribal law enforcement the resources they need to fight crime, including hiring more agents, prosecutors, and forensic specialists. We will give the communities the tools to crack down on gun crime, retail crime, and carjacking. Democrats will build on their progress in like uh, President Biden's executive orders on effective accountability policing by passing the George Floyd Justice as in Policing Act, and will end a uh, racial profiling and religious discrimination in law enforcement. I doubt it's going to happen. I honestly doubt it's going to happen. It's going to continue happening. Uh, 
Hey, they'll just like say something else to like why that person is suspicious as well too. They were wearing a hoodie. Um, what was I also about to say? I noticed how they noticed no mention of white collar crime. Absolutely no mention of white collar crime. It's all like blue collar crime or like poverty crime or that sort of thing too. Yeah, I didn't start to talk about the gun violence. Yeah, that, that's like a more visceral topic. I know it's not why they talk about it, but it's like, and they talk about police accountability. I just I doubt it. Again, like so many Democratic mayors, like they are not, they do not hold their own like um, uh, police forces to account. All right, next section.